This is Josh Beiser from GameWisdom.com. Hope you enjoy this critical thought, your daily discussion on game design. And be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and you can pitch future critical thought topics. Alright, before we get things home with today's critical thought, I got some administrative uh, topics to bring up, which as a kind of weird aside, will take us in, or segue into today's critical thought. So first off, as you know, I'm running the Near Automata Let's Play on the channel, and I asked this poll on Twitter, but I also want to put it here. In terms of the kind of content you want to see posted on the YouTube channel, and this will kind of be a good uh, test going forward as well, do you want to see everything, you know, raw and uncut from these plays on the channel? Would you like to just see the main progress, so the main missions, boss fights, stuff like that? Or would you like kind of a half and half approach, uh, showing videos of the main content and the side quests? What I was thinking about doing was kind of like a um, having the videos kind of be like the main videos, and then having like the quote unquote director's cuts, where that'll be the side quest content. And I'll put those in the let's play on the playlist, but they won't be like a numbered part of the let's play. So that way, if you want to see everything, it's there. If you just want to focus on the main missions or the actual progress, you can do that as well. And I'm kind of leaning towards that myself, because I know there are people who like to watch everything. But at the same time, I know that there are people who just want to see the important stuff. I know for me, like if I'm watching a show, I tend to fast forward through the sections I just get that aren't really showing any progress. So let me know in the comments below what you think about that. And this will, like I said, will be a good way to test things going forward for wherever the next Let's Play will be. Not uh, counting stuff like Bastion or the voting ones. Now, the other piece of news I want to bring up. I've been looking at trying to update like the thumbnails and some of the basic art and such for the channel. And that kind of stuff is definitely out of my ability. So I wanted to put the word out there. Would anyone know of or be able to do any kind of work in terms of like improve thumbnails or improve like a uh, stock I'm, I'm sorry improve stock thumbnails or intro and outro videos for the channel in terms of that kind of art unfortunately I really can't pay much but I would really love or I really appreciate anyone who would be able to go that extra mile uh, please let me know if you're able to do something like that or if you know someone who would be willing to uh, contribute along those lines. Speaking about contributing, the last bit of news for today is I came with another idea for a potential Patreon reward that I wanted to run by you guys. As you know with the critical thoughts and even the guest critical thoughts which hopefully will be coming as more people donate, I have an idea for another thing we can do. For um, in terms of like the critical thoughts, what about a special critical thought where people who pledge at this level will basically join me in kind of a roundtable discussion on a single topic. And the topic, of course, will be picked by the group. Because of the challenge of managing multiple people and, you know, time zones and logistics, this would be, I, I don't want to say it's going to be, you know, stupidly expensive, but it would certainly be more than the $12 uh, critical thought guest goal or reward at the moment. And what I'm thinking about doing with this would be the groups would be like a few people at a time, but there wouldn't really be a limit to this one. And we can certainly have multiple roundtables just with like different groups of people if there's enough popularity. So let me know what you think about this. And if you guys like that idea, I'll add that as a goal or I keep confusing goal and reward as it add as a reward to the Patreon in the coming days. And with that said, after the last four minutes of busy work, let's get today's critical thought, and this is going to be an interesting one. This is going to be based on today's post, which should be linked below, and it has to do with one of the biggest misconceptions about the video game industry. Every few months, there's always going to be a post or an article about someone, whether it's inside or out of the industry, calling or lambasting the industry to do something, whether it's about being more inclusive to women, being... Uh, more diverse, uh, focusing less on violence, and so on. And the problem with this goes back to one of the most unique things about the video game industry, and that is the fact that we are decentralized. 
There is no governing body or organization that controls the video game industry. And this is, as I said in my article, for good and for ill. On the plus side, this prevents anyone from essentially controlling the game industry. In last week's critical thought on the history of Nintendo, I talked about how during the mid-80s, Nintendo basically ran the game industry. You either work with Nintendo and abide by their wishes, or you didn't make video games. That was your only two choices. And I think that kind of fear has been a major part of keeping the game industry decentralized. Now the other part of this is we also don't have any major, I guess, hubs of video game development. Now, of course, we know of big ones like Austin, Texas, I think um, Boston, Massachusetts, uh, of course, Redmond, Washington, New York, and so on. But unlike other major industries, you don't need to really interact with them in order to run a business. Thanks to how globalized the game industry is and digital distribution, you can, as long as you have a few people willing to work for you in a computer, you can make a video game. And thanks to Steam and Humble Bundle and so on, I don't need to worry about Target, Walmart, GameStop, etc. I can release my game to the internet and let it go as it please. Now, there is a lot more to that as we have certainly talked about time and time and again here on the YouTube channel and discussions and such, but you guys get the picture. Now, the difference, of course, goes to other industries. When we look at stuff like uh, major sports, we know that each sporting organization or each sport has a major organization that runs it. Football has the NFL, basketball, the NBA, soccer, FIFA, and so on. And then we have major areas. If you're going to go into country music, chances are you're going to be visiting Nashville, Tennessee. If you're going to do, um, trying to think of some other really big examples, um, Wow, my mind is just completely blanking on me. But, oh, I know, the other big one. If you want to go into a major film, Hollywood, California, and so on. But the game industry is unique on this front. And in, this is an industry where everyone, big and small, has a chance. Like I said, some companies and people have greater chances than others, but that's a topic for another day. And as I said in the post, thanks to game wisdom and reaching out to developers, I have talked to almost uh, developers on every continent in the world. I think the only two I'm missing are Japan and Antarctica. So if anyone would like to talk to me on a podcast or live chat, please let me know. And that's the brilliant point about this. Everyone has their own story about how they got into the game industry, how they started making games for a living. There is no checklist for doing this. There is no um, game developer license that you need if you want to make games for a living. And, like I said, this has led to a very wide variety of games. And going back to the first part of this discussion, this is why you can't say that the game industry needs to do this or that or there's a problem, because who are you talking to? A lot of people will, of course, target the major publishers and developers, EA, Activision, Nintendo, etc. But, as we most certainly know, there's a far greater spectrum there. I mean, I'm sure for those of you watching this, you probably know a few of the major indie games out there. And as we've seen over the last few years, independent developers have been growing in popularity and getting the word out there. As we've seen with Clay Entertainment being on PSN, Yacht Club Games with Shovel Knight on all the major platforms, including the Switch now. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more examples of that in the coming years. But that's the point. This is an industry that is full of the big names as well as the small names and there's no one that tells you what is and what isn't a video game and if we start talking about that that's another 20 minutes easily as I said in the post I've played 80 to 100 hour long RPGs I've played literally four or five minute long art games and again there's just such a wide diversity and that's the great part about this one of the things I've been seeing over the last year or so has been more games that have been celebrating different cultures around the world. Whether it's uh, Chilean with Ace Team. Um, let me see, I'm trying to think of some other good ones. There's Norse um, with like the Banner Saga. And of course Poland with The Witcher. And Curse Castilla with Spain. And 
again, we can just sit here and go down the line here. And this industry was centralized, and only games who or only developers who dealt with like a governing body, chances are a lot of these games weren't going to be made. Now, with that said, while we've spent the last four or five minutes celebrating this decentralization, there is a major problem with this. And it's a problem that basically has touched almost all aspects of game development and the industry. And that is, it is next to impossible to enact industry-wide policies because there is no governing body. We have groups like the IGDA, ESA, e let's see, ESA, um, EFF, and probably a few other ones, ESRB, but they're more or less advocacy groups. They're, they're not our governing bodies. If the IGDA says that game developers should be doing this, there is no um, threats or anything they can push to get developers to agree to that. Another part of this, again, is that the industry is so wide that it's, it's just impossible to get everyone to agree on a single topic. Again, you have the major names up here, and then you have all the indie developers down below, and everyone worldwide. So getting everyone to agree on a single topic or a single policy going forward is next to impossible. And again, we have rarely seen the industry come together in this regard. The only uh, example I can think of would be something like the creation of the ESRB when there was calls to regulate video game content back in the 90s. But even then, the ESRB's relevancy today has diminished thanks to the rise of the indie market. If you're releasing your game on Steam or Itch.io or Humble Bundle or whatever, you don't need to go through the ESRB. Now, if you're going to be on a major platform like Nintendo, PSN, XBLA, then yes, you do have to work with them because it is a major console. But that's more or less going to be your publisher's job while you're still working on your title. But again, this goes back to the major point. Who really runs the game industry? And do we have anyone who we can honestly say speaks for the industry as a whole? And like I said, this has led to a number of problems, which in some ways are interconnected. As we've seen over the last few years, there have been issues of sexism, um, poor uh, long hours or poor working conditions like that, stress, um, high turnover rates, people not getting paid, and of course just the and growing issues of sexism, misogyny, and so on. There, but there's also issues of stuff like game preservation, esports, uh, unioning in the video game industry, and not just unions for game developers. What about unions for voice actors, sound engineers, artists, programmers, etc.? These are all issues that are connected in some way, shape, or form. But there is a major problem here. How do we get everyone on board with this? Because the point about industry-wide policies is that Everyone has to agree to it. And this has been just a major issue that has been going on for years now. Going back to the idea of a union. There are people who are for a union. There are a lot of people who are against it. And again, it's impossible to get um, a developer at Ubisoft to talk to a indie developer in uh, Croatia, for instance, and get them both on the same uh, conversation like this. Like we saw last year with the voice actor strike, voice actors certainly deserve, you know, protection, royalties, and stuff like that. But how do you communicate that to a programmer at Electronic Arts who is working uh, triple overtime to make sure his game gets done, or he gets uh, let go, or he's out of a job? And again, when I did that piece on the voice actor strike, I said what I said to everyone about that. When I say that the uh, voice actors want royalties, I'm sure all of you right now are thinking, screw them. And that's the issue. It's impossible to get everyone to see things from everyone's point of view. I was speaking to um, one of my Patreon supporters, so our first $12 donator yesterday, and we were talking about the big divide between esports and the rest of the industry. And that's easily another 10 to 15 minute topic if we get on that. But that's the point. For people who call for greater protection of competitive players' rights or a fair wage and stuff like that, how do you convince developers for that? 
And again, if developers want to seek um, better hours, better conditions, royalty, stuff like that, how do you get programmers on board? And if you get programmers on board, how do you get the artists and um, directors and, again, everyone involved? Now, if we had a union, that would be a different point. Or if we had some kind of governing body. But we don't. And if I do my job right, there are people from Gama Sutra watching this video right now. So first off, I can see you right now. And second off, what do you think about this? Again, this is an issue that's definitely more on the professional side or the working side of the game industry rather than the consumer. But even then, it also raises issues of getting consumers on board with this. Like I said a few minutes ago, game preservation is a major deal for me. But how do you get someone who only plays Call of Duty and Madden every year on board with that? Do you think they really care about playing SNES and NES titles? Or hell, even PlayStation 2 and Xbox titles in 10-15 years from now? And how do you convince those people that it's important that game developers get royalties or get better wages for the time they spend working? or have rules or laws in place about overtime and force crunch and stuff like that. Again, this is not an easy topic. And in the post, I said that it comes down to essentially drawing a line in the sand. Do we want to remain decentralized and basically let everyone fend for themselves? Or do we want to go the route of having someone in charge? Whether it's a, you know, a council of elders or a game industry president or something like that to manage things all around the world. And again, it's not, I can't think of an easy answer to this because even if we decide to do something like that, once again, how do we get everyone from Activision up there to developers in, um, I, you know, any con pick a country, and there's probably a game developer so you're out there, to agree on the same things, the same rules, and the same policies. And of course, we're not even getting to the topic of international law. Every country has its own laws and policies regarding working conditions, pay, etc. So how do we get everything like that together and make it fair and just for the entire industry? Again, I don't know the answer to it, but I am certainly looking forward to your comments below about this. So with that said, we're going to wrap things up here, and I can't really summarize today's critical thought all that well. Other than the fact that, again, when it comes to the game industry, you can't say the game industry should do this or should do that, because who are you talking to? You can't, this is the issue with having these discussions. You can, it's easier to say major developers should be focused on this, or maybe indie developers should be doing that. But you can't just say the game industry as a whole because there is no control along those lines. Everyone is doing things for themselves, and we rarely see industry wide policies, if at all. So with that said, thank you so much for watching today's Critical Thought. It's certainly been a mouthful. Let me know what you think about the discussion in the first part of today's Critical Thought regarding the Let's Plays, the Patreon, and stuff along those lines. And if you're new, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for future, excuse me, future Critical Thoughts or topics, be sure to let me know. And I'm always on the lookout for new games to spotlight and check out. So if you're working on a game or know an indie developer who could use a little bit of boosting, please let me know, and we'll see when you get in touch. Otherwise, be sure to check back daily for more great content here and on GameWisdom.com, where we examine the art and science of games. So until tomorrow, have a great night. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and of course share with your friends, it always helps out. For daily posts on all manner of game design and industry topics, check out game-wisdom.com. To support the site and everything that I do, be sure to check out the Patreon campaign. If we can hit goals, it will mean more content for everyone to enjoy, and I'll be able to support myself and my household. If you want to follow me, you can find me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day and random thoughts from me. And lastly, you can find me on Twitch right over there at GWBicer for daily streams most nights around 10 Eastern. Thanks again for watching the video, and be sure to check out more great content coming to the Game Wisdom channel real soon.